shot, but you know it. Hey, good afternoon everybody. This is Organic Dairyman. Welcome back to my channel today. Today is... Today is... What is it? Today is Thursday? Is it Thursday? I don't even know. Let me check. Uh, yep, today is Thursday, November 12th. Thank God for phones. I wouldn't know what day it was sometimes. <laughs> so anyways, I hope you guys are doing great. I'm doing pretty good. And uh, it's kind of another beautiful day, a little cooler than, well, the previous day. Yesterday, um, highs are in the low 30s here. And uh, yeah, and we got just a light little dusting of snow here last night. So uh, yeah, but anyways, what is on the agenda for today? Obviously you just saw, we did some milk testing here this morning. We got that all done. So that's nice to have that job out of the way. I hate milk testing, but it's necessary thing to do. It's good to do, so we did that. But like I said, anyways, getting back to what we're gonna do here today. Um, pretty much, my you saw in my previous video, my brother Steve did some plowing. And so he's gonna go back after he finishes up a few chores here, he's gonna head over there and go back to that one field and start plowing again. It's gonna take a little while to get that field plowed. And when I get the opportunity here, I think the biggest thing I'm gonna work on, I was gonna go out and do some field work today, but it's still a little too greasy and it's not cold enough. It was a little bit colder out. I could do, I just need to do a little bit of fuel, touch up, some touch up field work here on the farm around the ends, but it's too greasy. It's not cold enough out to do it. So my plan is to take the combine over there and get the bean head on that header trailer. I gotta get the header trailer switched so it will accommodate the bean head and then maybe um, move some equipment around in here. Um, I might have to take the corn planter trailer out and get that out of here, back the bean head in here. Just kind of stuff like that that's, you know, only thing you can do. So, and there's always the occasional unexpected thing that we ended up doing, but. Anyways, I gotta go feed the milk cows and uh, give this tractor a little snort of ether here and uh, we'll see how today goes. I gotta stop here with my feeding for a little bit. Man. I gotta blow this water line out because this water line here feeds the heifer water tank. Uh, we don't currently have a regular heated water fountain for the bread heifers. Sometime we need to get one dug in, but it's just kind of a money thing. Right now, the money always goes for other things. And uh, yeah, so when the weather gets like this, and nice enough to let the cows out and stuff, but it's cold enough, we have to blow this water line out. And I just got done watering. It's cold enough that we can't leave it on for very long. Otherwise the line will freeze. So I have the water line, or the water line, the air hose running over there to the shed. So, and I made up a little thing here. We just screw that in there and plug that in there and blow the line out or blow all the water out of the line. Whoops, it ran the water over just a little bit there.
I'm not going out to do any bailing. <laughs> I just need to move this out of the way so I get the combine out. Find a spot to put this. Work out of the way. Actually, though, we might bale some corn stalks here. We got that a three acre field here that we didn't uh, do any field work on, and that was uh, in the corn. We might bale some corn stalks on that. Anyways, that's what I'm doing, in case you're wondering. Okay. Oh. So, whoops. I brought the combine up here. I just checked the weather forecast and it's not supposed to rain or snow for a while. So, I figure that we get it cleaned off, get it all blown off, and uh, it'd be nice just to get it all ready for oats for next year too put the rest of the wires back in the concave and uh, just do the final adjustments but it's halfway there sending it back to soybeans is almost there so anyways uh i gotta go finish the feeding and uh, or finish loading up the feed wagon for the milk cows then i think i might grab a bite to eat Um, I was wondering if we could borrow the or use the hay grinder today Because we're running out uh, running out again, so We need to do that job. I don't know if tomorrow's supposed to be really windy or not Oh, hey good morning everybody Welcome to the second day of this video same video for me or for you guys a different day for me Oh, I'm getting mixed up like old Joe Biden. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, um, obviously I'm just weighing out my stuff here. So, I'm just about done here. Then we gotta go milk cows. And earlier, um, I was just on the phone with my cousin Bill. Um, we need to grind some more hay again. So I just had to see, call him and let him know that we were asking if it was okay if we could borrow or use the hay grinder because we always got to call and make sure everything's working okay on it so anyways that's one of the things i'm going to be doing today i don't know if i'm going to get anything done on the combine but <clears throat> my brother steve he's going to go back and over to that field and start plow or plow some more again today and i think a total acres that he had to break up was 60 so he may have got 20 acres done now so anyways he's probably going to get some try to get some more footage of that today so yeah and i'm gonna keep working on my stuff to get some time to work on the combine if i don't i don't i'll see i got some other issues dealing to my our wash machine in the house i know my wife says it's leaking water out of it someplace and we don't know where so i got look at i already looked at this morning i couldn't find anything right off the bat but she ran it and said it leaked again so i don't know I'll have to look at it and see because I don't like to throw things away. I like to try to fix them with my wife. Of course, she wants to go get a new one. I said, nope, because I'm the one that has to work to pay for it. So, <laughs> so I'm going to try to fix it. If, if I can't fix it, 
then it, then I guess we have to get a different one. We do, but I at least want to try to fix it. So we'll see what happens here today. Steven here. Um, I just thought I'd share a little story here. I'm at the faraway field and I'm just waiting for the tractor to warm up. So anyways, um, if you see off of the distance there, those trees, they're just to the west of this field here. And on the other side of the trees there, there's a farm place. And um, there used to be a guy that lived there that he used to run a, a John Deere two-cylinder salvage yard. Um, I don't know how many tractors he had at the height of it all. He might have had um, 150, 200 tractors for salvage. And back when um, Paul and I were in like our late teens, early 20s, we used to go over there um, quite a bit and get parts from him. And anyways, um, he was a pretty nice old guy. And um, I think he kind of quit doing it in the late 2000s. Um, his uh, memory started failing him and he wasn't able to get around real good. So I think it was around like 2011 or 12. Um, his wife, she's still alive yet, but um, she had him put in the nursing home because like I say, his memory was failing him and he couldn't get around very good. And so, um, after he went into the nursing home, um, she wanted to try to get his place cleaned up. And um, so, she uh, sold most of the, all, well, all the tractors. And I don't think she sold for very much. Um, it was kind of mainly just gave them to like the people that were his friends and um, knew him well. Um, she just wanted to get him out of there because she was worried about people stealing stuff and vandalizing him. But um, I guess he also had another farm site in the area here and he had like three sheds in the place and he had them crammed full of um, some kind of uh, more rare John Deere two cylinder tractors. I think not all of them even ran because they had been sitting in the shed for so long that um, some of the, engine, the engines on them had gotten stuck. and. So it was a lot of work for the people that did get the stuff. You know, they had to, to kind of work to get everything cleaned up and get it out of there. And so that's kind of why she didn't sell it for, you know, sell them for very much. 
is mainly just like I say just to get it cleaned up and out of there for her peace of mind and I actually just drove over there and just to look at the place um, I was gonna get some film footage of it but uh, the people that uh, the his wife she must have um, sold the place now um, I see the place is all fixed up and I see the tractors are all cleaned out of there um, I know the house and, and uh, property needed a lot of work but it looks like they really did some nice work on the house there so anyways I wasn't able to park in the driveway and do the story like I wanted to but um, I thought I'd at least do it here from the field where we rent anyways um, I remember a story um, a good friend of ours um, he was a longtime friend of this guy and he was the one that told us about him and you know getting parts from him and anyways he told us a story about one time this guy he was kind of well known here in the upper Midwest uh, among John Deere two-cylinder um, enthusiasts and anyways somebody called him up one day out of the blue and said that they had a, a warehouse in Chicago an old warehouse that they were gonna tear down and before they were gonna t tear it down they had gone through it and they found a crate in there um, that contained um, a completely um, a complete unassembled uh, a Waterloo boy John Deere Waterloo boy tractor that had never been assembled before it was you know brand new and he just you know thought wow that's too good of a deal to pass up the guy told him what he wanted for it and so he um, sent him a check and guess what he never got his tractor it was a scam so moral of the story is you know just because if somebody knows you're a collector and they uh, know you're looking for something and they call you up you better um, actually physically see the goods before um, you buy it it was um, just I'm sure this guy probably sold this fake tractor to how many other collectors too just to make money he probably found this guy's um, name somewhere and found his number and call him up you know just to see if he could scam him and sure enough you know he fell for the trick but anyways uh, the guy he he did actually have a Waterloo boy I don't know if he acquired one later or not or if he had already had one at this point but um um, when my brother and I would go there this guy he actually showed us his Waterloo boy it wasn't restored and it wasn't running but as far as I know it was all complete um, it just needed to be restored so it'd be kind of neat to know whatever happened to it who bought it and if they got it restored or not so anyways um, I never imagined that all these years later we'd be farming some ground over here and we used to come over here and get some parts so I guess I kind of thought I'd share, share a little bit of background information about um, the area over here and, and then also too the uh, our landlord here at this farm his um, uncle um, he also knew the guy pretty well and they sometimes used to borrow some of his equipment here at uh, um, plow the ground um, all they had here was a, a John Deere 4020 and so the neighbor guy over there he had a a John Deere 5020 and a six bottom plow and they said sometimes they used to borrow it and um, for doing some plowing over here he said that um, it could pull it but it had all it could do it was a pretty big pull for it so Anyways, I'll, I think the tractor's probably warmed up now, so I'm going to get a little footage and kind of show you how much I've gotten done so far, and we'll go from there. Thanks. Hey, everybody. I'm over here at the spot where we're plowing. So I don't know how well you can see, but... Basically what I've got done here for the last couple afternoons. Well, it's not even all afternoon, it's only just about maybe four hours a day that I'm putting in.
set you guys up here and I'll um, let you watch me plow for a bit. about uh, 17 degrees here so if you're not real familiar um, with this plow if you're new to the channel um, this plow is an on land plow so that wheel down there that's always supposed to be riding in that dead furrow instead of your tractor Wheel. And when we first bought this, I didn't know how it was going to be, if we are going to like it or not, but now after having one here for a while, I sure do like it. It's a lot nicer uh, sitting up on flat ground with a tractor and keeping both duels on, not having to take, you know, the hassle of taking one off done putting it back on it saves a lot of time I really don't know if this plow pulls any harder being it's an on land I've heard some people say they think they pull a little harder when they're um, on land I don't know Okay, everybody. Um, yeah, we're done for the day. And my brother got some more plowing done over there, as you saw. And I got done grinding hay. I think I ground. I got about ten and a, no, ten and a half bales. And I say, and I say that because um, well, my cousin had part of a bale left in there, so I had to leave another part of another bale in there. So. Yeah, so ten and a half bales. It took a while, but at least the hay grinder worked. You got the job done. So, and obviously I didn't get anything done on the combine. Anything more done on that? Didn't get that. I want to get that all blown off, so it's ready to be put away for winter storage or winter hibernation, <laughs> if you want to call it that. But so I guess my brother he's gonna have to keep plowing over there. Well, we'll get all that done. And what else? I don't know. I'm tired. It's after minute. It's actually Saturday now. So it is the next day. Yep. I don't know. I kind of hate this time of year. It's just like these long, short days and long nights. It's kind of the way it is, but I guess. Anyways, I better get to bed and so we can start start everything all back over again in the daylight hours, I should say. So guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope uh, you enjoyed the video. I, I'm sorry. I apologize apologize if there wasn't if you felt there wasn't enough content in here, but you know things this time of year things just start slowing down. So it's the way it is. So. 
Anyways, thanks for watching. And uh, please don't forget to check me on Instagram, Twitter, and um, Parlor. Parlor, too. Like I said, I mentioned that in a previous video. I am now on Parlor. I know a lot of people have been switching over to that because Twitter has been kind of... If you're posting any political stuff, mainly political stuff, especially conservative political stuff, Twitter has been really censoring that stuff. So and it's really ticked a lot of conservatives off and they've been leaving in droves going to this parlor. But anyway, I decided to give it a try to sign up for it. I haven't really posted really anything on there yet, but I'll see how it goes. Just kind of trying it out. <laughs> So, um, yeah, please also, also don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. And have a good night. Take care. And I'll see you guys in the next video.